as we have successfully set up hbase locally and also reviewed the multi node cluster let us go ahead and understand more about hbase shell by going to some of the commands when it comes to hbase shell if we have to perform any operations directly in the database it is nothing but a cli and we can perform most of the database operations using hbase shell it is similar to sql plus if you are familiar with uh, oracle that being said as i have mentioned to you earlier i'll be demonstrating using uh, multi node cluster and whenever there is a multi node cluster there is something called gateway node gateway node is the node on which the applications are typically deployed and also developers might have control access even in production in development cluster developers might have a bit better access so as long as you have access to a multi node cluster you should be able to perform some of these operations if not all even though if you are not signed up for multi node cluster or labs you can still go ahead and use your local hbase which was set up earlier and then you can start practicing these commands that being said here i am connecting to the gateway node of our multi node cluster using user training and based upon your user if you have lab access the designated gateway node can be different in my case it is gw02.itwasty.com in our case it can be same or it can be gw03.itwasty.com as well once you provide username and host name with ssh you should be able to log into the gateway node of the cluster you can launch hbase shell by saying hbase shell like this and then you should be able to perform any database operation by issuing appropriate commands to get the list of commands you can say help and you can actually go through the list of commands here they are categorized into different groups we have general where we can get general information about uh, hbase we can perform ddl operations such as creating tables dropping tables truncating tables so on and so forth we can actually create namespaces and manage namespaces using this group of commands that that are under namespace namespace is like schema in traditional rdbms where multiple tables are grouped together under one hood all the read and write operations are categorized under dml which is a bit incorrect ideally the read operation should not be treated as dml dml stands for data manipulation language in traditional rdbms we have commands like insert update delete which actually manipulate data in the tables read operations are not considered as dml however here we have read operations as well such as get and scan and then there are some system tools which are used to manage hbase uh, they are grouped under tools replication snapshots for backup so on and so forth all these commands are typically used by system administrators who have actually set up the cluster in case if they have to perform operations from the command line however most of these things can be done using alternative approaches and they will fall back on those things instead of using command line but system admins will have or should have decent understanding about all these admin commands as well from the developer perspective we should be primarily focused on ddl namespace and dml commands to begin with that being said we should start with creating a namespace to create a namespace we can actually use create underscore namespace so here i am creating a namespace called as training so you just have to use create underscore namespace and you have to give the namespace name if you are not sure about the syntax you can just type the command and hit enter it will give you the syntax and also sometimes with examples so you just have to say create underscore namespace and namespace name in single quotes like this and then if you want to list the namespaces you can actually say list underscore namespaces or namespace and it will give all the namespaces that are available in the cluster once you create the namespace you can actually create tables as part of the namespace that being said it is not mandatory to have a namespace to create tables so if you just want to understand the syntax of create table command you can just say create and hit enter and it will actually show you the different options with respect to create table so typically we just have to specify the table name like this if you have namespace you have to have namespace name colon and then table name and then you can give the name of a name uh, column family like this name implies and then column family name and then versions which means it will try to have five different versions of individual records we will actually get into those details later it is not very important at this time uh, but sometimes we might have to use this versions also so this is one of the example using which you can create a table that being said without namespace if you want to create a table you just have to create and then give the table name in single quotes either you can specify column family name using name or directly like this and a table can have multiple column families so in this case this table have three column families column families are not same as traditional columns in rdbms column families are group of columns 
when I, whenever we create a table in any NoSQL database, we doesn't give the column names. We give some information um, such as column families uh, in the case of databases similar to HBase. In some other databases, they might be termed differently. That being said, we'll be creating a table with one column family. So the syntax is create and I want to create in namespace called as training and then column and then we have to give the table name which is nothing but hbase demo and then comma and then you have to give the column family name i am giving it as cf1 and hit enter now the table is created with one column family which is nothing but cf1 whenever we perform dml operations such as put we actually give the columns under this column family and we, sh we will be inserting one cell at a time a cell is nothing but combination of key and value for a column within a record we will see that in a moment so this is how you can create the table once you create the table if you want to list the tables you can actually say list and it will give us the table names if you want to get tables from a given namespace you can actually say list underscore namespace underscore tables and you can give the namespace name which is nothing but training here and you can see that there is one table here now let us understand few concepts with respect to table it is nothing but a group of rows which have keys and values so each row will have a key and value so the key for a given row is called as row key and a value is nothing but combination of keys and values again all those keys and values with respect to columns will go to a column family while creating the table we need to specify a table name and at least one column family as we have demonstrated column family will have cells a cell is nothing but a name and value pair we will see very soon when we actually perform some dml operations once the table is created if you want to describe the table you have this describe command you can use this it will give the entire metadata of the table if you want to truncate you can actually perform truncate like this it will first disable the table and it will actually delete all the records as of now there are no records and hence it is not doing anything that's why you can see it is saying zero I, even uh, if there are records i think when we perform truncate it is nothing but a ddl operation and uh, you will always see this message only we will see at a later point in time when we actually have the data as well and we can confirm whether it actually gives zero rows or some other value here that being said truncate will take care of disabling and deleting all the rows in the table if you want to drop a table you cannot just drop directly like this it will fail saying that table must first be disabled so to disable you can actually use command called disable and hit enter table will be disabled and then we can actually issue drop command by saying drop training hbase demo at any point in time if you are not sure about the commands just say help and you can actually go to the appropriate category and you should be able to review the available commands so all table manipulations are called as ddl commands um, except for uh, inserting and updating the data into the table and you can see the list of ddl commands that are available similarly if you want to manipulate data within a table then we have to focus on dml commands and these are the commands which are available for us that being said let us create the table once again so create training hbase demo it requires column family name so we have given the column family name as cf1 and we have created the table once again as the table is created now we'll actually perform some uh, dml operations into this table just to make sure that we are able to load the data into this table and also we'll understand the syntax of inserting the data and also how we actually perform the dml operations the only dml operation to insert or update is nothing but put so we just have to say put and then if you type enter you will get different examples with put along with the syntax and semantics of this you can see that if the table is in namespace you have to say namespace colon table name and then you have to give the row key after the row key you have to give the column name and value and this column name will typically be prefixed with column family name so in our case we have to say cf1 comma uh, colon c1 or cf1 co colon employee name so on and so forth so whatever column name you want you can actually prefix with the column family name and you should be able to insert the data so let us try it out here so put namespace name is nothing but training hbase demo is the table name and then row key so row key can be string or integer irrespective of the data type we are using it will internally stored as byte stream uh, so here i am trying to pass as integer so i am saying one 
and then we have to give the column family name which is nothing but cf1 colon the column name so let's say column name as column one and then value one so we have inserted one cell for one record it is not the complete record so even if you have multiple columns that needs to be inserted for a given record you cannot just insert all the columns in one shot you have to perform put operation only with one column name and value that being said if you want to insert one more record or one more cell for existing record you just have to use the same row key as one of the existing ones and then you can specify the column name like this and then we can actually give the value for the second column similarly if you want to insert a completely new record with a different row key then you have to change the row key here and you can insert the record let me actually insert one more record like this and hit enter so we have inserted four cells however the number of rows or records are only three so this is one this is another one and this is another one now i can perform scan operation scan is nothing but uh, to fetch the rows from the table typically we use scan to get all the rows or first 10 rows etc without any filters if you want to get the data we will use scan especially if you don't filter on the row keys we use scan if you want to get a value for a given uh, row key we use get we will actually see those details as part of the CRUD operations very soon for now i am not getting into too many details with respect to that i am just running the scan command to ensure that data is inserted without any issue you can see there are three rows this is one this is second and this is third one one thing which you can observe is even though i have inserted one first and then four and then two when we actually perform the scan the data is sorted in ascending order by row key you can see here the first two belong to one the second one belong to two the third one belong to four so irrespective of the way data is inserted into the table it will always be sorted by row key on top of it it, it will also be partitioned um, internally so you don't need to worry too much about how to partition the data it will take care by itself this is applicable not only for hbase but also any nosql database where data will be typically indexed on the primary key or row key and also partitioned automatically for you so this is very brief for you about hbase shell you can actually go through the commands practice as much as you can by going to the list of these commands but as a developer for now just focus on ddl namespace and dml commands as we have understood HBase shell briefly, now it's time for us to explore CRUD operations using this HBase shell, which is nothing but a command line tool for us to interact with HBase database.